Hey guys, welcome back once again. For those of you new here, hello and welcome. My name is Evie and today we are just jumping straight back in to some more Planet Zoo. Now, as you can probably tell, this is not my usual episode. This is another voice over um, time lapse because somebody, now I'm not gonna name names, may have not double checked that the microphone was connected properly in their recording software and filmed the entire thing with no audio. So, yep, not sure who that was. What an idiot move to do, but here we are just doing a nice little time lapse of the L Animal build. Now, as you've probably seen from the thumbnail and the title, I am building for the La Gibbon right now, and I'm actually really excited for it. I wanted a monkey in the zoo and you guys seem to really like the idea of that as well although there was a lot of love for the llamas and I would love to have done a walk through habitat for them but alas we're here with the La Gibbons I am kind of pushing myself a little bit out of my comfort zone here with this build as I don't usually build structures very well this is yeah quite out of my comfort zone I'm trying my hardest to make it look nice I find it really hard to kind of build in this game and make it look natural and not too boxy and too repetitive but I think I actually did a really good job with this I'm pretty happy with how it turned out I am going for the kind of cylinder build um, I don't want to call it a dome because it's not really a dome um, and you will see me struggling with this as I don't do it often so I was struggling to get it to line up correctly but I do get there in the end but I was hoping with this kind of monkey house build to have it so it was kind of at a higher temperature. Like we are in a temperate zoo at the moment and as you've seen in the past couple of episodes, there has been snow, there is a lot of rain and I felt like the La Gibbons probably wouldn't appreciate that much. So ideally with this habitat, of course in this game, it's not really viable to do that or does it make any sense really to do that? But this is, kind of my idea of a hothouse like the temperature in there is going to be a little bit warmer and then the outside and it's going to have that tropical feel to it because I felt like putting tropical plants outside like I know that they can make it work but it just doesn't seem as realistic to me and with the log gibbons you can't actually have a walk through habitat with them they are maybe confident with humans I can't remember now that I've seen it but you can't have humans enter the habitat and I wanted to work around that a little bit so my idea with this is to have a sunken habitat in this house. So the monkeys will have climbing structures and some little rock islands and everything to climb up on to be the height that the guests walk through at. But the guests are pretty much walking through it like a canopy walk. They are like raised above pretty much at the same height of some of the rock formations that you see me do put in in a little bit. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. It's really kind of came together in the end, but please, once again, don't look too closely at my builds. Things don't line up perfectly. It is not 100%, so just divert your eyes. Don't look too closely, please and thank you. Especially with mesh. I feel like in this game can be really tricky to get right because if you are not on the correct angle, you can't actually see the mesh, like it disappears. So it's really hard to kind of tweak it and move the camera around to see if it's lined up correctly. So divert your eyes. But I didn't really have a full plan going into this, how I wanted the habitat to look. Like I knew I wanted kind of climbing frames up a little bit higher. So the guests were walking above the ground because I knew that you needed that for the La Gibbons. But the rest kind of all just came, came to while I was doing it. So I sink this habitat down a fair bit. I keep the building at the same height and then I do a path kind of floating above it. Now I did realize while I was putting this all together that the monkeys were going to be able to escape because they can climb, therefore jump onto the path and get out. So I realized once I've put the path in that I kind of need to create a cage around the entire path. Which sounds silly, but it kind of is like a tunnel that we get to walk through. A mesh tunnel that the guests can go through. And the monkeys can actually climb over it so they can be above you. And I just think that's a really cool, fun feature to have. Is like monkeys above you in a cage. Climbing everywhere. And I'm just really happy with kind of how it comes together. 
So obviously time-lapse videos aren't for everyone and I do understand that. I do apologize for the missing management side of these videos, but this will be, I promise you, only for this episode. The next episode will be back to my usual form of content if I don't do something stupid like disconnect the microphone again. Um, but just to keep you up to speed with a couple of things that did happen in the management side, I do believe that the Formers and Black Bear did have another baby and the Jaguars, I believe, had some other babies. I think that might have been all that happened. I think I went through and got rid of a fair few capybaras and all of the fun things, tried to just do a little bit of management for the animals that like to breed like crazy. But I don't think there was anything too wild happen. I did reduce the number of people in my zoo to 2,500 as well. I have capped it at that just because I'm afraid that the bigger the zoo gets, the longer and more strain it's going to put on my PC. I do believe I just said the longer it put, like it, the longer the strain. No, it just, if it's gonna put too much strain on my PC. It already takes like a minute to load into this zoo and I'm fearful that we're not even halfway through. So um, yeah, I've capped it at that and I'm hoping that that doesn't affect my money too much because I'm not struggling with money in this zoo at all at the moment, which is great. But the more animals I put in, if I don't have more people coming in, the finances can be a little bit of a struggle, but we'll see how we go. I do also apologize for that jump just then. Um, you're not gonna believe it. I was on an absolute whirlwind of mistakes. I got up to get a coffee and I sat back down and started playing and forgot to press record again. So you missed a fair bit of the rock placement, but you guys have seen me do it once. You've seen me do it a million times. Just placing rocks everywhere. I wanted to have kind of like, I don't want to call them cliffs, but I don't know what else they'd be really be. It's like a rock formation more than anything else that the monkeys can kind of climb up. I want to have trees on them and bushes, and that's where I want their kind of enrichment items to be so they have a reason to actually climb up that high. Now here you can see I'm just trying to make the path cover. I wanted to have it fully mesh so they could see all the way around. I didn't want any obstructions. And I am actually pretty happy with how it came out. I have never really attempted to fully cover the path before. Now, I'm gonna come clean. There is a mistake made, and it was the fact that I didn't just have a straight path. So I do cut out most of me trying to place this over the path in there because it doesn't line up perfectly in some spots and I had to tweak it and I had to move stuff around and I get it there in the end, but it was a painstaking process. I think this entire build probably took me three-ish hours. I'm pretty sure that's how long the footage is that I have condensed down here before the time lapsing of it. It was, I think it was pretty much spot on three hours and that didn't even include my gameplay, like the management. That was just the time lapse of this build. I do this to myself. Every time I sit down, I'm, I'm like, I'm sick of editing like four hours of footage. Keep it short, sharp and sweet, Evie. Just like quick little speed build and just a little bit of management either side. And then I import the footage and it's like four hours and I'm like, oh no, not again. I just get too into it. I get in the zone and I completely forget how long it's actually taking me to build. But as you can see here, yes, it does a sloped path. It's also a slightly curved path. I nearly gave up halfway through putting this over it. I'm not gonna lie. It was a very, very tedious process towards the end, trying to get it to line up correctly. So I do skip over it. Don't look too closely at it. It lines up the best that it possibly can. I also didn't like the fact that these railing was sticking out the bottom, but by this stage, my brain was already frazzled by trying to place that kind of mesh over the path that I said, that is for future Eva to worry about. I will fix that off screen and you guys will see it nicely finished at one point. Now I do have plans to put all of my habitats in this zoo up on the workshop. I do apologize that I have slacked a little bit on that, but once I have finished this, it will be up on the Steam workshop. I will have that linked in the video description as well if you are wanting to get any of these builds for yourself. Now I do only have the I'm gonna call them beige la gibbons in here at the moment, but there is, I believe, three color ways for them. And I was keeping an eye out while I was building. I kept checking to make sure if there was any more and I haven't stumbled across any more color variants yet. 
but I do want to get my grubby little mitts on that soon. So hopefully in the next couple of episodes, we can find some variants of that. I'm even happy to pay like top dollar in this zoo and then put it back into the market when we have babies for cheap cash males. You know the drill. But no, I wasn't having much luck. So there is only beige ones. And at the moment, I actually think we may have ended the episode with some pregnant La Gibbons. I reckon it was just one. I think they have like a alpha male, like alpha female and male situation. So I think you can only have one pregnant La Gibbon at one time. I think there is only like the alpha pair can breed and you can't have several pregnant Gibbons. Gibbons? Can I call them Gibbons? Or are they all La Gibbons? Uh, going at once. So I would love to get my grubby little mitts on some other kel Keller? No, color variants and get that all going and sorted because I would love to see some variation. So I will be keeping an eye out, trying so hard to get that. If um, any of you guys have La Gibbons that you want to do a trade deal with, uh, let me know. Get in my Discord and we can set up a time to try and do a little trade. Happy to pay top dollar. Top dollar for these gibbons, you know? Now, I wanted to have this kind of habitat accessible for the monkeys to only get up on these rock kind of formations through climbing. So, I, I like initially, I wanted to have the climbing frames that they, I think, came with the La Gibbon kind of pack or the update that was around that time, which are the metal frames, which I do have one placed in here, but I was having a really hard time trying to get them to all line up correctly it's like it needed to have grounding and I couldn't place it if it didn't have like access to the ground which was kind of annoying so I then went with the vine idea because I'm pretty sure they have it, is it I'm gonna pronounce this wrong is it brachiation which is when they can swing across it which they just released for the orangutan in this um game recently which is such a fun thing to look at I can't wait to put orangutans in my zoo one day and be able to see it but I have got vines so they can access all of these points. I even connect it to the mesh area as well. So they can just go across and be walking above the humans. I think that's really, really fun. Uh, I love, I absolutely love how the log gibbons run across this area. Like the little vines, they run across it and they look like Captain Jack Sparrow of Pirates of the Caribbean. It's this real like clumsy arm flailing run and it's so friggin adorable. I love it so so much another thing i was really excited about with this habitat is this little river usually when i place water in an enclosure i need it to be crystal clear so you can actually see the animals swimming in it but i'm pretty sure the la gibbons can't actually swim in this game they might be able to i've only ever seen them drink i haven't seen them actually swing swing swim i have seen them swing um wow that was an absolute tongue twister i feel bamboozled already uh, so I was happy to be able to color it murky and have it look like a muddy little tropical river. And I'm so thrilled with that. And I'm placing the plants in it and making it just look overgrown and just, oh, it brings me so much joy. I'm also trying my hardest to just place the enrichment items in this enclosure. I don't really want to have a food tray or anything. And all of the food enrichments will be on the bottom layer just so the keeper can access it because I think they need to be able to walk up to it. I could be wrong. So I wanted to put this foraging box in, but it wasn't going to work with like the terrain manipulation that has to go on around it. So I did place it here, which isn't the best spot because technically the guests can't see it because they are walking directly over the top, but I'd prefer them to have it than them not have it you know so too bad so sad for the guests you'll just have to watch the la gibbons swinging to and from everywhere else but this is coming to the near end of the speed build here i am just doing some plant placement and all that jazz by the end of it i just can drop the building back down and just tweak it to make sure that it lines up so their animals can't escape at all which i do have to tweak a little bit where the mesh joins but it is a really easy fix and I think it works out well. I'm also really happy. This was all just by chance that the trees lined up to be able to go out the hole that I have in the top of these roofs. Cause I like the idea of that like sun coming through still because I find when you build in this game, when you put roofs on the lighting really takes a hit because obviously it has that natural source of lighting that goes with it. I also saw another YouTuber called Simply Savannah, which if you haven't seen her stuff, her stuff is amazing. You should definitely go check it out. 
and she told me a trick. She told me personally, no, in her video she said a trick that was to get the lighting to change if you are in like franchise mode, you can go to create a blueprint, change the time in that, and when you come back to the zoo, it changes the lighting for you, which is an absolute game changer because you guys have seen me struggle so much. I don't know if it changes the weather or not, but waiting for rain to pass and waiting for the light to be right, I have waited so long sometimes for that to happen. And the fact that it's been that simple this whole time is absolutely life-saving. So Savannah, if you for some reason ever see this video, thank you. Uh, that was such a game changer. You're literally the best. I was losing my mind half the time trying to do it. So here I am just checking for the lie gibbons again and alas, there was nothing in there. And so I just decided to fix this little door area and I'm actually kind of happy with how it turned out. It blends in quite well. It like just works. I covered it in this, um, I think it's the eco or the conservation pack wood and just left the door available. And that was all that you could see. So I'm just going to do a nice a little bit of panoramic shots of the zoo. So I'm just gonna leave you with some nice kind of scenic shots of the La Gibbons and this whole habitat in its full glory. But before I do skedaddle, if you wanna have a say in next week's episode, your choices are the Malayan tapir, the mandrel, the maned wolf, the meerkat, or the moose. I love that sele like, selection. That's a lot more than we've had recently. I feel like we've been stuck with about three options for the past couple of ones, but those those are fun. I like all of them. So if you do want to have your say in that, leave one of those commented down below, or I will put up a poll for those who don't feel comfortable commenting. You can vote anon anonymous anonymously on that one. But here, enjoy some shots of the lug, even the being little cheeky rat bags. And I'll see you next time. Bye.